Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the game I just promised you yesterday. So it was played in 1995 in Horgen um, and we have Gary Kasparov, number one in the world at that time. Uh, he's ranking 2795. He was already 32 years old, but he was still dominating all the tournaments and he's gonna play as white. And his opponent, Vasily Ivanchuk, Ukrainian Grandmaster, he's ranking at that time 2740, number three in the world. Um, he was 26 years old and he's gonna play as black but before we start the game I would like to uh, just tell you you know um, a short note about Vasily Ivanchuk uh, first of all he was considered as the most talented players uh, in the maybe not in the chess history but in his era um, he was uh, considered also as the one of the chess geniuses by Judith Polgar among Magnus Carlsen and uh, Vichy Anand so definitely Definitely very strong player. However, because of his uh, hot temper and uh, you know, uh, sometimes he had the the, the moody days. Uh, he couldn't get the top performance uh, all the time. So he was considered as the uh, another world champion. However, he couldn't deliver you know stable performance, get to the candidates, play through the candidates, you know, uh, and 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 win the the world champion title. This is, you know, something really special where you really have to be uh, very, very stable. So Vichy Anand, for example, said um, you never know what mood gonna have, you know, um, Chucky, uh, because this is how it's called in the chess world. Because one day he can treat you like the, the brother, which he didn't see for a, for a long, long time. Uh, so, so everything is fine, it's very friendly. And another day he just ignores you and you don't know what's going on. It's maybe your fault or it's his mood or, or what is going on. So uh, this is Ivanchuk. And so sometimes uh, he, for example, against uh, Vichy Anand missed the checkmate in one move which uh, I would show you in the future and uh, definitely that game as well because uh, th that's just incredible but that's just happened you know the top player uh, usually he was in the top 10 sometimes when he had the you know bad period and, and lost couple of tournaments he could drop to the to the position you know 30 or 40 and then after another couple of tournaments he got to the top 10 again uh, so th this was his problem, very unstable player. So uh, without further ado, let's see how he did against Gary Kasparov in 1995. Gary opened with e4. We have e6, d4, d5, French defense. Uh, and now white can play knight on c3, knight on d2, uh, e5, advanced variation, exchange variation. These are the, the most popular lines. Gary went for knight on c3. Uh, and now knight on f6, this is one of the ideas. Uh, d takes on e4, Rubinstein variation, or bishop on b4, Vinaver. Uh, and Vinaver is the most popular. So bishop on b4 and now e5. And here black usually play c5, c5, a3, exchange the, the bishop for the knight and the game can continue. Uh, knight on e7 also is playable, however we have b6, a less popular line, however if you've seen a couple of days ago uh, I, just, I just posted the game where lila chess 0 play advanced uh, variation in French defense with the, with the b6 idea. So the idea is to exchange the worst piece in the black army, the light square bishop, uh, for probably the best piece uh, in the white's army, the, the light square bishop as well. So uh, this is the main idea here. And in the advanced variation, it's not so easy because c3 can be played. Um, and then queen on a4 is the idea uh, to actually control a6. That's, that's just a threat. The queen doesn't go to a4, but that's of course the threat with the check, with the attack here. So if you are interested in this variation, just check that game. It was very good game where Lila Chess 0 won against a Stockfish. So that was that was very, very memorable. Uh, but as I said, um, uh, C5, Knight on E7 uh, is, is, is playable, but B6 is the idea from the advanced French. Uh, and okay, we have A3 kicking the, the Bishop. Now Bishop cannot go to A5 because it's blocked by, by the pawn. Uh, so it can take the, the Knight or bishop on f8. Look at this move. Completely counterintuitive, but however, if you um, understand what I just said about this exchange variation, it makes a lot of sense. This bishop actually controls a g7, so there are no tricks with the, with the queen on g4, no threats here. 
Uh, and Garry Kasparov likes to play, you know, the, the aggressive openings. Uh, but here it's, it's very difficult to choose one. Uh, so we have knight on f3 by Gary uh, and now knight on e7. And by the way, nowadays in the 21st century, if you have b6 uh, and uh, an a3, most of the games ends with the bishop on f8. I'm not sure how it was in 1995, maybe it was kind of novelty, but definitely it was novelty against, you know, the world champion. Uh, and here Gary goes for h4, h4 and asking black, are you gonna play, uh, for example, h5? Because this knight would look very nice on f5. The problem is, if h5 is played, this bishop would get the square on g5 and white would have the uh, tremendous advantage in the, um, uh, in the game. That would be a very bad move. Uh, so black play h6 and now we have h5. So knight on f5 is not no longer possible here so has to find uh, you know another way to develop and uh, usually this knight um, belongs to c6 uh, and then it can follow um, to the to the queen side somehow we have a5 also quite important move it's it's waiting move uh, however i would like to show you something bishop on a6 now uh, could be a little bit too early because bishop on a6 knight on a6 and now queen on a2 and this knight would have to retreat to b8 because there are no better squares all of these squares are taken okay queen on c8 but it's completely unnatural so knight on b8 it doesn't look good so this is why we have a5 uh, and now um, bishop on a6 is playable the knight can jump to to a6 now uh, if queen on e2 then of course no problem because it's controlled by the by the rook is defended by the rook uh, and then after c5 this knight gonna gonna support the, uh, c5 move uh, and everything is fine however white can play uh, something to avoid exchange of the of the light square bishops bishop on b5 check we have c6 uh, and here the grandmaster who commented the, the, this game said probably bishop on d3 uh, would be the best still you know just accept uh, exchanging of the light square bishop and continue the game for example bishop on a6 and after uh, developing the bishop to f4, uh, bishop on d3, c takes on d3, and just played on this uh, semi-open c file, and everything should be fine with that position. However, Gary Kasparov has a different opinion here. Uh, he thinks this light square bishop is the the very precious asset in the in the French defense, uh, and he restricts the, a bit of this bishop. So bishop on a4. Uh, now we have knight on d7, developing the the knight knight on e2 uh, preparing c3 and making the space for the bishop and now b5 kicking the, the bishop bishop has to retreat to b3 and now c5 we have c3 supporting the the pawn chain uh, of course this is the main idea in the in the french defense and now knight on c6 so black doesn't have much space to develop however as you see uh, all the moves are pretty much harmonious and uh, it's quite uh, rich in ideas the position is quite rich in ideas we have castle by Gary Kasparov uh, and now queen on c7 and now how to continue the game as white so the main idea here the main idea which should be probably played is knight on h2 then continue with f4 uh, bring the bishop for example to e3 um, then maybe the bishop to to c2 uh, and then continue the attack on f4 everybody knows that then then the knight can jump to to f4 uh, make some tactics on the on the e6 this knight also can jump uh, oh, there are also some tactics on f6 this is all uh, pretty well known and this is a very natural way to play uh, however uh, instead of that we have rook on e1 so it seems like Gary Kasparov uh, makes some waiting move he don't want to uh, scare Ivanchuk and says okay just develop a bit a uh, castle on the king side and then I'm gonna attack and I will show you a couple of lines where where how this attack can can end uh, for now we have c4 kicking the bishop bishop on c2 and now knight on b6 bishop on f4 developing bishop e7 bishop on g3 and here 
black actually could play b4 uh, and i will just show you the idea after a takes on b4 a takes on b4 exchanging the rooks yes this knight doesn't look great and it looks like white gonna control a file uh, which is of course uh, really great for 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 white however it's not that easy so let's say bishop on a4 pinning the the knight uh, bishop on d7 queen on a1 and now uh, how to play next uh, knight on b6 attacking the bishop so let's say bishop on c6 bishop on c6 and it's not so easy actually to to do that the black can actually uh, castle now uh, or even ca can play king on on d7 bring the rook here uh, and it's black who controls the, the the a file so not 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 really easy to do that uh, and if you play queen on d2 and bring the rook it's also not so easy because knight on b6 bishop on c2 now queen queen a7 and you cannot bring the rook to a file so for example rook on d1 maybe this way bring the rook this way uh, but then we have b3 and look at this pawn chain the base is in the b2 and it's very easy to attack for example bishop on b1 now queen a1 putting the pressure on b2 the knight can join uh, also this rook can come in the future maybe even sacrifice some um, some of the pieces and this pawn gonna be uh, extremely dangerous and uh, white gonna have the problems in making you know any counterplay on the king side so uh, before was possible however Ivanchuk prefers not to exchange um, the rooks because he thinks okay this rook gonna be uh, more useful on the b file so we have rook on b8 uh, and here finally knight on a H2. So seems like Gary Kasparov uh, prepares f4 uh, and maybe he's gonna start to attack. Uh, we have queen on d8. Now this move knight on h2 actually prepares very interesting maneuver because this knight can come to g4 and there are some lines where, where it can be sacrificed on f6. I will show you one of them. For now we have queen on d8. Uh, this is you know preventing move because this bishop is on this on this diagonal so if the knight for example jumps here uh, and black decides to to take on f6 uh, you see that already the queen would be under attack so so queen on d8 uh, and now we have knight on g4 pretty natural move and now b4 so counter attack on the queen side we have a takes on b4 uh, a takes on b4 and now uh, b3 is the serious threat and definitely Gary Kasparov doesn't like it however he could um, play something like b3 this was possible uh, and after b takes on c3 knight on c3 and eventually bishop on b4 the rook can and goes to to e3 very natural defending of of c3 and everything is fine with the white position however we have c takes on b4 and now knight goes to b4 very nice square for the for the knight very active attacking the bishop so bishop retreats to b1 still staying on this deadly diagonal uh, and now bishop on d7 so Ivanchuk is still waiting with the castle bishop on d7 so it looks like the game you know both of the players waiting improve the position of the pieces but uh, Gary doesn't go for f4 f5 attack uh, and Ivanchuk waiting for that then he doesn't need to castle uh, and whenever the castle happens so for example castle if, if black want to castle now that would be extremely dangerous as I said knight on f6 and if black actually move the king then look at this rook a3 this is one move um, then bishop and the queen just joins uh, sacrifice on on h6 this rook can join and just four or five moves and this is you know uh, very dangerous attack so uh, out of nowhere out of nothing uh, white actually can construct deadly attack and if black decide to take the the knight look at this he takes on f6 now the rook is hanging so that is the problem uh, and also the bishop is under attack so uh, black could take on f6 but then lose the rook exchange and probably the game uh, or play bishop on d6 but this is even worse because after bishop on d6 queen on d6 queen d2 wins the game because the queen attacks on h6 the bishop controls uh, h7 uh, so the king cannot help so the only move actually is knight on d7 to to give back the material however after queen on h6 uh, knight on f6 uh, white don't need to take the the knight 
uh, or can, but do, do it this way. Queen on g5 with the check, king h8, and now do it the same with the check. King g8, h6, and checkmate in the next move, and black has nothing to do about that. So uh, it's not possible to castle. This is why we have bishop on d7. And here Garry Kasparov has very difficult decision what to play now because before he didn't play b3 just to exchange all these pieces and now this is the weakness and black can concentrate on, on this weakness, uh, win that in the future and uh, and had a very comfortable game with this passed pawn, protected passed pawn, so it's definitely, you know, a uh, winning idea. Uh, but how to continue? Uh, the grandmasters who actually analyzed that game suggested that a queen on d2 was another waiting move and now if black decide to castle there is no uh, knight on f6 because the rook in the, and, the, and the queen are connected so not the problem however simply bishop on f4 and and you see that attack is already very dangerous so uh, black would have to uh, give up the, the the pawn and play knight on d3 bishop on d3 c takes on d3 queen on d3 uh, and white gonna have one extra pawn on the on the queen side uh, very comfortable game for white so that was that was uh, very possible uh, make another waiting move. However, Gary Kasparov was probably um, very enraged because this game, you know, uh, he cannot get the initiative and he loves to get initiative, you know, sacrifice one pawn uh, and get the winning position. But but this is position is so blocked, so difficult to play his favorite chess. So probably he was um, very impatient and play B3. Uh, so now he doesn't have the the exchange but now Ivanchuk starts to get initiative and he play rook on a8 exchanging them the rook so we have rook on a8 queen on a8 bishop on c4 and knight on c4 so what Ivanchuk uh, achieved here okay Gary doesn't have the weakness here but look at these knights these knights are so powerful uh, very strong pieces uh, and what to play as as white white the last chance probably to continue the game is play something like bishop on f4 uh, bring this bishop maybe to defend d4 maybe to exchange one of the, these knights these knights are completely uh, dangerous However, Gary didn't go for the for the bishop on f4 and he played knight on c1, probably trying to exchange the, the knights this way, but it doesn't work. Ivanchuk has a total initiative, total domination on the board, bishop on a4, kicking the queen. And look at this, these knights control all the squares around here, so the queen can actually go only here. Uh, but if queen on f3, then a knight on d2 wins the bishop for free, it cannot be defended after moving the queen uh, black just gonna win the bishop so Gary Kasparov play queen on e2 and believe me or not but after queen on a7 this pawn on d4 cannot be defended look at this a lot of pieces around it cannot be defended the bishop has you know two moves to do to defend that uh, this knight cannot go because of the queen uh, and there is no way to to defend also the rook of course cannot go to d1 because of the of the bishop so uh, that's not possible we have knight on e3 trying to to exchange some knights here as they are very very dangerous but Ivanchuk uh, very calmly just pick up the pawn uh, we have knight on c4 we have d takes on c4 uh, and here in this position Gary Kasparov play queen on f1 making some space for the knight however after castle he resigned and he resigned because this pawn gonna win the game uh, the rook gonna support uh, and of course the knight supports the bishop supports another bishop can of course join as well uh, and support the march of the pawn so black gonna win is the position is completely winning for for black this is why Gary Kasparov just resigned so what a game very beautiful and I think it's a very valuable game especially for the French players but also for people who play um, who play e4 uh, and then sometimes you know uh, they face uh, the Vinaver variation uh, b6 is, can be an option so it can be pretty dangerous it's good to know that how to how to play that uh, just to play your normal French you're gonna be okay with that uh, maybe you will be forced to exchange the light square bishop because you know if you try to uh, prevail that if you want to uh, keep this for later it can be you know very very dangerous however it's also possible 
So uh, yeah, that's all for today. If you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another games, new tournament is coming, Chess Legends. So press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.